So, first of all, a, a couple of things, guys, you will learn pretty quickly about me. One is that if the sun is out, I'm going to sweat a lot. In fact, I've, I've even thought about changing all the ceremonies, graduation, convocation, awards day, everything to January and February, and then we'll just get on with the, the rest of the, the year when it warms up. Um, the other thing that you'll learn probably pretty quickly, in addition to my sweat and lies, I cry a lot. And that both of those things could easily be in store today. Um, first, thanks Mr. McBride and, and the Board of Trustees and, uh, and thank you, Mitch and, and Shell, for the gifts, and Kyle and, and, Al, and, <laughs> and Tyler for the gifts. Um, it, these mean a lot, and I'm looking forward to wearing the jersey and, and sporting the tie. I'm also loving the way everybody's dressed today. <laughs> and thinking, <laughs> I might need to change the dress code around here. Um, two other special welcomes, particular, actually three other particular welcomes. My family, um, who's here today. And my mom and my brother and my sister and their families and of course Elizabeth and her family is here as well um, and a second particular welcome to anybody who's new to Gilman this year welcome to Gilman guys who are not new to Gilman this year make sure those guys feel as welcome as you have been in your time here so make all those guys feel welcome and then finally a third particular acknowledgement um, to the guys behind me the seniors of the class of 2014, fellows, it is a real privilege to be up here with you all today. And by the way, I'm loving the Anchorman poster in, in the senior room. Every time I walk by, I just start giggling to myself and thinking of lines. So nice work with the decor as well. It is, it's hard, actually impossible for me, and this is, this is the sweat part. It's it's impossible for me to talk about matters of importance without invoking the memory of my father. In other words, little guys, what this means is that when these kind of moments come up, I think about my dad a lot. My dad passed away um, in 2006, so just over seven years ago, July of 2006. And he remains, to this day, the best man that I'll ever know. At his memorial service, I spoke about two qualities in my dad that, that stood out in my mind that he possessed. The first was that my dad was really comfortable in his own skin. I always got the sense that he knew who he was and he was never trying to be someone or something that he was not capable of or not comfortable being. The second quality my dad had was that he had an acute awareness of his place in the world. He seemed to recognize that he was a small part of a much larger world and he seemed to run, understand that he was connected to the people and things in it. Dad knew that somehow we were all in this together, that he was both shaped by and had a responsibility to his fellow men and women. And with my dad, these two characteristics, they were related. Each contributed to and was a product of the other. Because he was comfortable in his own skin, he was able to see and understand more clearly the world around him. Because he understood his role in the larger scheme of things, he was more comfortable with who he was. To me, these two qualities related to each other are what allowed my dad to be a great man. For one, they empowered him to enjoy the company of those around him and to celebrate other people's successes. He provided to me and those around him an example of how one could be competitive and driven, which he was, and still a nice guy, which he was. Also, his comfort with himself, his understanding of his role in the larger world, gave him perspective to recognize the opportunities he was given, mostly in the form of being able to go to good schools and put them to good use. 
I've remarked before that my dad lived in the space where privilege and humility coexist. And here's what I mean by that expression. When we're truly humble, we recognize that we're part of something much larger than ourselves, and we take advantage of our privileges, our opportunities, to make the world a better place. So what does my father's memory have to do with today? The opening of school and, and the convocation in my installation. Which is a funny word, by the way. Installation. I'm still getting my head around it. I, Ms. Turner and I were joking. It makes me sound like I'm a refrigerator or a carpet or something. My brother actually emailed and asked if he needed to bring any tools up for the ceremony. So what does all this have to do with my installation and the opening of school? First, my dad's example helps me to remember the importance of our surroundings and how they're a big part of who we are. Given that fact, it's easy to think that my dad would be so pleased with this moment. He'd be pleased not necessarily because of any job status I'd achieved. And one thing you all understand, and, and guys behind me, you'll learn this quicker than the people in front of me. We have parents as a bar, we have a pretty low bar for this sort of thing. As long as you get off our payroll, then, then we're pretty happy with what you're doing. But don't get me wrong, Dad, of course, would have been proud of the fact that I'm, I'm now Gilman's 14th headmaster. But there's a much deeper meaning, or there would be a much deeper meaning to his pride and satisfaction with my new title. My dad would be pleased, not just because of what I am in headmaster, more importantly, he'd be, he'd be pleased because of where I am and whom I'm with. If it's true that so much of what defines us and shapes us is our environment, what and who surround us, then I know that my dad would be so pleased to see me at Gilman, surrounded by you. Gilman's his kind of school. In fact, the two characteristics that I've described in my dad define for me two of the Gilman Five, integrity and humility. When we're comfortable with who we are, we have integrity. And when we understand that we're part of something much larger than ourselves, we're truly humble. So when I look to the new school year, and as I become Gilman's headmaster, my great hope is that Gilman is a place of integrity and humility. I hope that Gilman is a place where students are comfortable in their own skin and where we recognize that we are a part of something very special and much greater than ourselves. While these may be individual traits, we can help each other develop and possess them. You can help make Gilman a place where all of us are comfortable with who we are. Start by free being friendly to each other. Say hello. Welcome newcomers into your group. But do more than that. Celebrate each other's successes. And support each other in challenging moments. Be comfortable making mistakes and own up to them when you do. When we do these things, we all gain the confidence to care about the common good. In other words, when we take on these characteristics of integrity and humility, then we will be able to occupy that space where privilege and humility coexist. As our nation's paused over the last several days to remember the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington and Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, much has been said and written about access to opportunity in the United States. Gentlemen, you have access to opportunity. Gilman provides that access regardless of your background, your zip code, or your family's tax bracket. I'm challenging you today to make good use of that privilege. Since my arrival as assistant headmaster three years ago, I've been struck by the overwhelming sense of people in the Gilman community that they're part of something really special. It's a strong feeling, it's palpable, which means, guys, you can feel it in the air almost. And it starts early, and it sticks with students through childhood and, and stays with them well into adulthood. This is indeed a very special place. It's why I wanted to stay here and become headmaster. But here's the thing. We have a choice of how this privilege can define us. 
We can use it to think that we, as individuals and as a group, are simply better than everyone else and distance ourselves from them. Or we can channel our talents, our opportunities, and our privileges to serve each other in our larger world. It's funny, I, I, reckon, I realized the other day that 26 years ago, almost exactly 26 years ago, I stood before the students and faculty of my high school at our own opening convocation to address them. And on that night, I stressed the power of each other's company in shaping our experiences. A lot's happened in the last 26 years. A lot of good things have happened in the last 26 years. And I hope I've gained some wisdom in that time as well. One thing I know is that that basic tenet still holds true. We do forge our, uh, we do forge our identities within our environment. And we, in turn, help to define the places in which we live. So, gentlemen of Gilman, I challenge you to be comfortable in your own skin, recognize that we are all in this together, and make use of this special environment and this awesome opportunity. Mr. McBride, Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and students, thank you for entrusting me with this role, which I accept with humble appreciation of what this school represents. I've been really fortunate in my life to be surrounded by extraordinary people in some really special places. And I can make this statement now with absolute certainty. There's no place I would rather be than right here, right now, in this school and with you. Let's make this a fantastic year by making each other a better person and this world a better place. Go Hounds!